So I'm going to be showing you guys how to install Apple CarPlay on your stock infotainment system on your Gen 3 Mazda 3. The first thing you need to do to have Apple CarPlay on your infotainment system, update it. The minimum update you need for Apple CarPlay to work is version 70. I'm going to be installing version 74, which if I recall correctly, is the latest version. In order to update your firmware to version 74, you must already have version 55 or above. If you try to update your firmware to version 70 or above while having a firmware version that's below 55, you'll break your CMU and you'll have to buy a whole new infotainment system. So if your firmware is currently below 55, update it to 55 and then you'll be able to update it to version 70 or above. If you're already above 55, then you're good to go. So I'll go ahead and show you guys how you can check what version of firmware you currently have. Go to settings, now we go to system, click about, version information, and yeah we got 74.00324. So if your firmware is currently above 55 or you just got done updating it to 55, let's go ahead and see how we can update it to version 70 or above. There's a link in the description with all the files that you'll need for this software update. So beginning steps of this process is to first not press the brake pedal or the clutch, tap the button, go to FM radio. You're going to want to open up the test screen and the way you do that is you hold the music button, the favorite button, and the actual volume button. So let's go ahead and do that for two to five seconds. Test screen is coming up. Once the test screen comes up, you'll type in three, enter, and clear. After that, you'll type in two, enter, and then clear. And that whole process is the DTC deletion. I'm not sure what DTC is. And to finish this process, all you do is turn the ignition off. So you press this button twice. Again, without touching the brake pedal or the clutch. You lock the car and then you leave it for three minutes. All right, it's been three minutes. After you get done with the DTC deletion, it says to go ahead Press the start stop one time without depressing clutch or the brake. Now you take the USB with the infotainment system firmware update. Make sure it is formatted to a FAT32 format, only up to 16 gigabytes. Go ahead and plug this guy in. Okay, so I checked in the here and it says USB one, USB flash disk. So it is recognizing it. Go back to FM. Now it wants us to do the same process to open up the test screen. So that is the music button, favorite and mute for two to five seconds. Okay, there we go. Now we put in nine, nine and enter. We click search. Okay, so right now my current is 59. 0.00.441 and I'm updating it to 74.00.324. I'm in version 59, which is above 55, so I can install the 74 firmware. Click reinstallation package, hit install. So now this is a lengthy process. It'll take, uh, I think, 25 to 40 minutes to install the firmware from the USB into the infotainment system. All it says is updating software to the firmware. Once every 20 minutes, you must step on the brake pedal if an automatic transmission or the clutch pedal if it's a manual transmission or open and close the driver's door. Update has been completed. It probably took, I think it took about 20, 25 minutes to actually install, so not that bad of an update. Now it says uh, install was successful. Please turn ACC off and on again for changes to take effect. Press this button twice. Off. It says to turn ignition off, which is off, and remove all key fobs from the vehicle and lock all doors. Wait for three minutes. So let's go ahead, move our USB, get our key fob, and close all the doors, lock them, wait for three minutes. All right, we waited those three minutes. Now it says to press the start stop button once without pressing the brake pedal or the clutch. Go to settings. Now we go to system, click about, version information. And yeah, we got 74.00324, as you guys can see there. So now that you got the software, firmware situation figured out, now you need the USB hub that actually accepts Apple CarPlay and makes it 
usable on your infotainment system. You can get one of these USB hubs from eBay or Amazon. They're around 100 to 150 bucks. I got mine from a Mazda OEM parts website. Um, it was a little bit more expensive. It was like 200 bucks, but I like having the ease of mind of knowing that it's OEM. So firmware is updated. I'm gonna go ahead, disconnect the battery. Let's go ahead and start taking off some, some freaking twam. <laughs> what are we? Now, if you uh, aren't me and you didn't lose the bolt to actually screw this infotainment system in, you'll have a screw in here, an extension, unscrew that guy, but for me, it's already off. There we go, all right. Things unplugged from this guy. Down there, okay, I don't know, oh yeah, you guys can see that tab. Tab to the left, tab to the right underneath those wires. And that is a USB hub for my location. I'm gonna go ahead, push down those tabs and try to pull it out in a way. See if I can get her going. So um, I was able to get the old guy out. It was an absolute battle. And I used caveman tactics, as you can tell. I did not want to take out the entire panels and everything, the shifter, all of that. I got an eighth inch drill bit, and drilled out these tabs. You can tell that I got this one real good, but I missed on that one a little bit. But these weren't uh, as important because I had something long to go down there, press these down. And then whenever I was pressing this one down, I got some needle nose and jammed it in the USB ports like so. Held on, pushed that down, pulled, kept tension, pulled this one down, pulled some more. And that let the top free, but these bottom tabs were still stuck. So drilled this guy out, this guy halfway broke, but eventually got to the point where I was kind of stuck on one tab and I just yanked on it real hard. I'd say, um, or I would say this is no longer usable, but but we got a second one. Show you guys the wiring. So, plugged in here, ran through here, made a little loop, 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 covered up, covered up some foam, zip tied it, and then I used the same foam to stick it to this plastic right here. Shoved it under this carpet, so this kick panel will go in there quite nicely, hopefully. Yep. And then I fished it through here, obviously with this kick panel off, through this hole. So right here to here. Then I might have to zip tie this up here. Fed it through here. And then you can, if you feed it through there, you can feel it poke with your fingers. Right there, way back there. Once you're actually doing it, you'll know exactly where precisely, but I think right now you got a good idea. I hooked up the battery. Infotainment's connected. This is not clipped on just because that would suck in, sucking. That would suck a lot if uh, that guy didn't work and I'd have to screw around with the clips again. This guy. Nice, it works. All right, so it works. It just sounded weird that first time because I was recording through the mic app. So it was like calling through my phone. This guy back in and it's now official. So that's it for the Apple CarPlay install for a Gen 3 Mazda 3. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, I'll answer them. And just as a reminder, every file that you need for this update is linked in the description below. After using this for a few months, I think it was well worth the effort. The navigation is so much better on Apple CarPlay compared to the navigation that came with Mazda. Overall, I think the effort was definitely worth it.